Uh, are all of you f f familiar with the uh, Guru Yoga invocation, Jisu, Dewa, Jampo, Bodhang, Du? Hmm? Yeah, well, we'll begin with, with that. And when do we begin with this uh, bloody webcast? It's going now. It's going now. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Om Jisu Deva Jampo Po Drang Du Drin Chen Sawe Lama La So Wadev Sanjay Sam Sutran Parim Poche Rang O Rang Ji Shim Par Chin Ji Lo Ji Su Dewa Chen Po Po Drang Du Drin Chen Sawe Lama La So Wadev Sanjay Sam Sutran Parim Poche Rang O Rang Ji Shim Chin Ji Lo Ji Su Dewa Chen Po Po Drang Du Drin Chen Sawe Lama La So Wade Sanjay Sim Tu Tun Parim Poche Rang O Rang Ji Shim Par Chin Ji Lo Now aren't I supposed to have some microphone here? Uh, okay, great, because I hate wearing my microphones. <laughs> so, uh, so first I'll say a few, a few things about myself and uh, how I got in, in, involved with uh, Bern. Now, as a child, I had uh, read about the ancient world and also uh, ancient uh, re religions. And in some books, it talked about uh, oh, Buddhism. Uh, but all it said was about uh, monks and monasteries. And uh, 12, 13 years old, I wasn't terribly interested in that because I had in junior high school become interested in girls. So I did not want to uh, become a, a monk living in a monastery. However, by the time I went to uh, u u university, and this was, of course, in prehistoric times, before some of you may have been born, uh, beginning of the uh, 1960s, uh, I read the famous uh, Tibetan Book of the Dead which really caught my uh, interest. And it said in uh, terms of uh, Tibetan Buddhism, one didn't have to be a monk to practice. There are other uh, possibilities. And it mentioned this very uh, mysterious teaching and philosophy called Dzogchen without actually uh, telling you uh, what it was. So I became very interested in the uh, uh, Tibetan uh, tradition and when I left uh, Columbia University, I transferred out here to UC Berkeley, started studying Sanskrit, and that was also the first year that Tibetan was uh, offered there. And the prof uh, told me there's a whole program at the University of Washington in uh, Tibetan uh, studies uh, funded by uh, the Rockefeller brothers. And so I ended up uh, going there, and it happened to be the time when Professor uh, e Edward Konsa uh, came to teach, and I became uh, his student there in uh, Buddhist uh, ph philosophy. So uh, I was studying then uh, Tibetan and uh, Sanskrit, but then uh, uh, Dr. Kansa had to leave the country, and my program was at an end. So, 1969, I went to India, which was my uh, original intention. The following year, in 1970, I went to uh, New Delhi to the uh, International Ac Academy of Indian Culture, run by Professor Lokesh Chandra. And he had just published a book called uh, Bompo Nishpana Yoga. And uh, 
because this was about this mysterious Dzogchen philosophy. I bought a copy of it when I was there, but I was mainly engaged in uh, research with uh, Nyingma Palamas in uh, Darjeeling, and so uh, I didn't follow this up. But when I was in Darjeeling, I first heard about the existence of uh, Dolanji, having met some people from a uh, Bumpo uh, family. Well, later uh, things switched over to uh, Nepal, and I was living in uh, the village of Boda outside uh, Kathmandu. And at that time, uh, uh, Namkai Norbu Rinpoche came with a group of his uh, Italian students. They were making a, a film for the Italian TV on Tibetan uh, medicine. And uh, one of my friends, Mario, he was in charge of this uh, project. But at uh, that time, uh, after they were doing the, the filming, they were sitting around the uh, new dormitory uh, there built at Tarak Tulku's Kampa. And uh, Namkai Norbu was only speaking Italian, so I didn't speak Italian. So I'd go off with uh, Mario and some other people to other lo locales, mainly the Chang Kong. And, um, but later, uh, Namkai Norbu uh, Rinpoche came to uh, California. And so I came out for that, and we had a series of uh, retreats over uh, three years at Potter Valley and uh, uh, other places. And he talked a lot in those days about uh, uh, Bon, the uh, uh, pre-Buddhist uh, re religious uh, culture of uh, Tibet, which uh, really sparked my interest. And then at uh, visiting his uh, retreat center in I Italy, Marigar, one Dutch friend of mine uh, was willing to sponsor my doing some uh, Bumpo uh, Dzogchen translations. So I had this book I got from L Lokas Chandra, and started uh, translating from that. And the following year, and this was uh, again a bit prehistoric, I think 1971, 72, in that period of time, uh, Geshe Tenzing Wangja came to Italy for uh, the first time. And of course, uh, then, uh, uh, fresh off uh, the banana boat from India, uh, he was still in monk's robes and uh, so on. And when he uh, taught at the uh, retreat there, this uh, Namkai Norbu Rinpoche had gone to Tibet. So there was an open space for uh, uh, other teachers. And he started uh, teaching uh, from the texts of the Zhang Zhang Ninju and gave me some uh, help on the translations I was uh, doing. Uh, then when I returned, a friend of mine picked me up at JFK and took me up to uh, Conway, which was not Namkai Norbu Rinpoche's uh, retreat center in Massachusetts, and Yongzin Rinpoche, uh, Lopen Tan Tenzing Namda, was there. And of course, in those days, uh, everyone uh, called him the Lopen. Uh, Yongzin Rinpoche came later. And indeed, they called His Holiness uh, the abbot. So we were f familiar about talking about the Lopan and, and the abbot in those, those days. But uh, 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 this was when I met Yongzin Rinpoche for the first time. And this uh, was about 1981, I think. And uh, he was very interested in translations. I was amazed because it was often difficult to get uh, some lamas like Nor uh, Norbu Rinpoche were very busy uh, to sit down and uh, work on something. And so I was delighted with this and immediately uh, we did the translation of the uh, Ursul Dunkor, which is the dark retreat practice text from uh, the Zhangzhou Ninju. And uh, this is for the traditional 49-day uh, dark retreat, which seems a bit uh, a long time, 
so it's often advisable to uh, do a much shorter retreat in preparation for uh, doing this. Anyway, uh, we did that, and then uh, I followed him out to San Francisco here, where he gave some uh, pub public talks. The first of them was at the uh, Berkeley uh, Shamanism Center, run by uh, some guy from Brazil who was uh, mi mixing up Tibetan Buddhism with Makumba and shamanism and mm -hmm. sacrificing <laughs> yes, sacrificing goats, things like this. Anyway, <laughs> so we're there, and uh, Yongsen Rinpoche gave his usual introductory talk, you know. Uh, we used to call it Bumpo 101. You know, that uh, there are three meanings to the term. Uh, the uh, first being the old indigenous culture of uh, uh, Tibet, which was certainly shama shamanistic and dealt with the spirits in nature, the Shidduk and uh, the Yula, the mountain gods and uh, all, all this. And certainly within the Bun tradition, there are very uh, ancient rituals uh, to propitiate uh, the spirits and they have survived in written form and uh, exist and are practiced even uh, today. And uh, uh, then secondly, there is Old Ban or Yung Jung uh, Ban, which I had translated as the eternal tra tradition. Yung Jung meaning indestructible or uh, everlasting or eternal. And uh, Ban uh, meaning uh, te teaching uh, here. And uh, uh, this is the teaching of the Buddha to Tenpa Shenra. So de definitely not uh, shamanism. And uh, then uh, new Ban, uh, Ban Sarma, which began around the f 14th century with the uh, further discoveries of uh, termas or hidden treasure uh, texts, uh, beginning with uh, 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 Lodok Ningpo and so on, and coming down to uh, recent times with uh, Tertons such as uh, San Sanji Lingpa and so on. And uh, uh, then he concluded the talk and immediately somebody raised their hands and said, but Rinpoche, we want to know about shamanism. You know, mm -hmm. we're all reading Michael Harner and we want to do shamanism. And he looked over at me and he said, Shamanism? What's that? <laughs> and I said, Rinpoche, Jantri. They want to know about Jantri, which is the Nepali word for uh, a, a shaman. And he said, oh no, we never sacrifice goats and sheep and deer and chicken like this. We do not do marcha, you know, uh, blood sacrifice. <laughs> so it was a rather funny uh, uh, incident. And then he taught uh, elsewhere in uh, uh, California, also came up to uh, Coos Bay, Oregon, where he gave his, uh, the first time he gave an empowerment uh, in, in the West. He said that uh, during his time in uh, the UK, in England, uh, back in the uh, uh, early 1960s, he didn't meet anybody who was interested in the practice of meditation or dharma or bond or anything like this. There, of course, was Professor Snellgrove, who was very much interested in the tradition. And this uh, ended up with them uh, doing this book, uh, The Nine Ways of uh, Bond, which was published in about 1967, I think. Uh, but that is just uh, uh, contains a, a lot of extracts from the the ZG. The ZG being the uh, largest uh, hagiography or biography of uh, Tenpa Shenra. So it's only uh, so, so selections, but it uh, was about the only book available, uh, really, on Bonpo teachings uh, at that time. Because although uh, before 1959, when His Holiness the Dalai Lama fled uh, Chinese-occupied uh, Tibet, relatively little was known in the West about uh, Tibetan Buddhism 
in uh, general. Some uh, translations have been done uh, years before that in St. Petersburg, but then uh, Joseph Stalin took over and put, put an end to Buddhist studies in the so Soviet Union, most of the scholars being uh, e executed, except for uh, Professor Ni Nicholas Pope, who I happen to study with in uh, uh, University of Washington. He was uh, the most famous living Mongolist uh, at the time. And anyway, uh, uh, this was really the first book. I mean, back in the 1880s, there was a book by Schiffner on uh, the Lubum, the uh, 100,000 uh, Nagas, which is a famous Bumpo uh, book, and then the Buddhists made their own digest uh, of this. Uh, that was in German and published in St. Petersburg, and then you could maybe find a copy in university libraries. And then Professor Helmut Hoffmann at the University of Munich, uh, he wrote a book on Bonn, but used uh, only uh, Buddhist sources. Because in those days, there weren't any Bonpo texts uh, uh, available in uh, the West. So, we didn't know anything uh, uh, about Bonn, but what first uh, piqued my interest before I went to India was this uh, book by uh, Marco Paulus, Peaks and Lamas. Uh, he went with Giuseppe Tucci, the famous uh, Italian Tibetologist, to Tibet on one of his expeditions. And one place uh, he visits a uh, Bumpo monastery. I suspect it was uh, Yungdrungling, but he didn't give the name of it. Uh, anyway, I thought, oh, this is very m mysterious. You have these uh, uh, Bumpos have uh, monasteries, too. Because in the West, in those days, it simply said Bon was uh, nothing but a pre-Buddhist uh, shamanism. Anyway, uh, <laughs> with the uh, 1959 and the coming of uh, Lamas uh, uh, into exile in India and Nepal, everything uh, began to uh, change. So uh, I had uh, gone up and uh, studied uh, uh, Tibetan and uh, uh, Sanskrit, and so I was a jump uh, uh, ahead when it uh, came to uh, working with uh, Lamas. So returning from uh, Namkai Norbu's uh, uh, re retreat uh, uh, site in uh, Italy, I met Young Zin Rinpoche, and then we're out here in uh, California. And then he had uh, his uh, gallstone operation in uh, uh, Los Angeles, sponsored by uh, Rosalind and the Healing Light uh, Society. And while he was recovering, I was able to uh, go down there and continue doing translations with him, uh, specifically some practices for uh, the Yidam uh, meditation deity, Zhang uh, Zhen Mary who has, was traditionally associated with the Dzogchen teachings of the uh, Zhangzhen uh, Nianzhu. Well, uh, then uh, Yongzhen Rinpoche again visited uh, the West, both in the U.S. and uh, 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 Europe, and I was able to see him in both places and uh, made a transcript of uh, his teachings in Europe and the U.S., which we published as uh, Bumpo Dzogchen te teachings. And then uh, with him I was able to systematically translate the uh, te texts of the Kaju from the Zhangzhen Nianzhu and begin with the Nyamju, the experiential transmissions, but also after uh, the death of my mother in New Jersey, I had uh, some extra money for a change because I'd already lost my u university job when they uh, downsized uh, the uh, faculty and they felt they didn't need a prof teaching comparative religion anymore. They replaced uh, us with uh, IT teachers and things like that. So I was sent out to uh, pasture and for a time had to work in a bookstore in New York City. 
Uh, but then getting a small inheritance, I was able, after 10 years, to go back to uh, Nepal. And at that time, uh, Yangtze Rinpoche, and with the help of my, my friend uh, Kempo Nima, he began uh, construction of uh, Trita Norbutse Mo Monastery. Now, <coughs> in Nepal, in those days, there were really no uh, Bampo Monastery. There were some temples, like uh, Samling up in Dolpo and so on. Uh, so Yongzhen Rinpoche felt that they really needed a school in, in Nepal. And so uh, this is what he created as a treat in Norbutse, taking the name from uh, a, a former uh, monastery in uh, Tibet. And uh, so I was able to go, go to Nepal and with a, fr a friend of mine we uh, were able to find the monastery. Now, uh, Kathmandu has grown more than any other place I've seen in my life, even more than Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Because when I first went there, well, you have Swayambu uh, Hill in the west beyond the city of Kathmandu, and then you had the Ring Road, which was built by the uh, Chinese. And then it used to be all just countryside. And then you go a couple, a mile and a half uh, to the west, and you have Nagarjun Hill. Well, Yongzhen Rinpoche uh, had bought some land from uh, a local landlord, Ram, and we began con construction there. And by the time I got there, we had to cross these rice paddies, you know, from the uh, ring road, and so I finally got there. And at that time, the Hlokong uh, had just been completed, but they had some artists from Bhutan there making the big uh, 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 Gutan, the big uh, statue of uh, Tenpa Shenra. And then in a field a short distance away, there was the Tsamkong, uh, the dark re re retreat house. And we're just uh, below that, it was just a small building and a kitchen and uh, so on. There are a few monks living there, not so many. And Yongzin Rinpoche and Kempo Nima and, and all this. So uh, then I used to meet with uh, him in this small di uh, uh, dining hall he called the Pizza Palace because <laughs> <laughs> he said they should be serving pizza there. But we had chapatis instead of pizza. Anyway, uh, but then over the years this uh, really uh, grew, as did uh, uh, the land the, between the monastery and the ring road. If, if you go now, it is solid city uh, be, be, between the ring road and Swayambu, because during the 10-year uh, Maoist insurrection in Nepal. Uh, everybody with money left the countryside and came into Kathmandu and built big houses for, for themselves. So now uh, it's all become uh, urban, although the monastery is still a bit up on the hill. Uh, <clears throat> but you, you get a view now of a, a cityscape with uh, no, no more uh, country there. Anyway, uh, it was at that time that I began to uh, continue with the translations of the uh, Zhang Zhun Yanju and also the practice manual associated with that called the, uh, the Jawa Chuck Tree, but uh, also uh, then the Maju, the uh, Bumpo Mother Tantra, which is a real uh, heart practice of Lopen Tenzing Namdak Yongzin Rinpoche. And I created my little uh, Bumpo translation project and uh, printed up uh, a number of these uh, uh, translations for practice in photocopy uh, uh, editions and uh, so on. And uh, in the meantime, uh, Geshe Ten Tenzing Wangjiao had uh, uh, left uh, Italy and the Dzogchen community and came to the uh, U.S and uh, decided to establish his uh, Ligmicha Institute in uh, Virginia. So uh, he uh, called me up and uh, asked for uh, my part participation. So 
I, I lent him a helping hand and wrote the first two issues of uh, The Voice of the Clear Light and so on. And uh, then he started uh, inviting Yongzheng Rinpoche, first to Virginia, later to uh, New Mexico, Jimenez Springs, and so on. And uh, uh, then I would also see uh, Yongzheng Rinpoche in Europe. And so I was able to uh, put together uh, a book uh, to um, Bumpo uh, studies called the uh, Oral Tradition from uh, Zhang Zheng. Now, as I said, at that time, the only you know, book out there was the uh, Nine Ways of uh, Bond that was done by uh, David, Sc uh, uh, David Snellgrove in consultation with uh, Young's in uh, Rinpoche. And I had this uh, manuscript, which uh, I largely did at the time I was uh, living in Denmark, because I, I wanted to get, get away from uh, the US and Richard Nixon and all that kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, so I was there and all right, I, I did this. So I rang up my American publisher because I published some other uh, books on Nyingmapa texts uh, before that, uh, that is Self-Liberation and the Golden Letters, with Snow Lion. So, all right, I sent the manuscript for Snow Lion, and then finally I heard back from them, and uh, Jeff Cox and Sidney Piper, and they said, well, our uh, marketing people are against publishing this because it deals with uh, uh, Tibetan history. And they had previously uh, published a, a, a book on uh, the Pio li lineage, uh, Pema Norbu Rinpoche's uh, lineage in, in Tibet. And they only sold a few copies. I know because I bought one, but <laughs> <laughs> other people didn't. So uh, they, and then Sidney warned me, he said, what you've got to do is find, uh, they don't, want us to publish it because they say we won't be able to sell any copies. So you should find a, a publisher outside the US. And I said, why? And he said, well, there's a new computer program called BookScan. And uh, they are putting on BookScan every book published in, in the US and recording their uh, sales. And uh, then uh, they record your sales and you get a mark or rating uh, based on the sales of the first book that is on uh, book, book, book scan. So even if you're uh, Stephen King or something, a best-selling author, if your first book on there doesn't sell very well, you will be uh, have a bad mark for life. So only publish something that's go going to be very popular and trashy and new agey uh, here in the US, you, then you get a good rating, then you won't have any problem. So then I remember I was always going into this book, bookstore in Kathmandu, Ma Mandala. I had a very, very nice uh, fellow there, uh, Bidur, and we used to talk a lot. And uh, he had asked me about publishing something from the Bumpo tradition. So I went to look him up, and uh, his brothers running the shop, they were always saying, oh, he's in India, he's in India. So, well, what's going on here? So I waited uh, uh, many weeks, and then at a party in uh, uh, Boda, someone told me, oh, he's opened a bookstore in Tamil, uh, Tamil being kind of the tourist area in, there in uh, Kathmandu. And, uh, so I went there and I met Bidor and he said, well, we've had a family uh, squabble there and my brothers <laughs> don't want me to be successful publishing or anything like, like this. So this ended up uh, with me doing my first uh, Bumpo uh, pu publication with uh, uh, Bidor. Now, in the beginning of this uh, Zhang Zheng uh, Nianju text I had gotten many years uh, before in New, New Delhi, there's first a, a, a history text. So I translated that uh, his history text, and uh, so you find that in, in this book. 
But then there was, at that time, uh, a lot of uh, anti bumpo uh, pro propaganda in the West, uh, coming both from uh, some uh, Tibetans and some uh, Westerners and still saying silly things like a bumpo is just shamanism or bumpo lamas are black magicians that eat babies and things like, like this. Uh, so I decided, all right, we'll do the history, but that's not enough. I'm going to put in here also a translation of uh, Guru Yoga for uh, Taparitsa and also a translation of the Ngundra. Now the Ngundra had been uh, meaning preliminary practices. This had been uh, introduced into uh, the West by the Karma uh, Kajapas, particularly Kala Rinpoche. And so most uh, Western uh, Buddhist practitioners thought uh, uh, Ngundro is the essence of uh, Buddhism, which isn't quite true, although it's a very useful practice. So. I don't discourage anybody from doing it, but uh, there are many other uh, uh, practices in the various uh, Buddhist and Bampo traditions, just not the Ngundro. In fact, Ngundro is actually a, a general word, meaning preliminary practice for whatever practice you may be doing. The so-called Mundro that the Dharma centers generally uh, push, this was invented uh, by the Sakyapas after the uh, uh, 11th century. As Dujim Rinpoche used to say to me, uh, Shakyamuni Buddha and Padmasambhava never did the Mundro. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was with him in Darjeeling, the word Mundro never passed his lips. But in the U.S., then that was different. <laughs> and, uh, but I thought it would be very useful to show that the Bumpos are not bad guys. They also do Ngundro. And so <laughs> then I put in the Ngundro uh, translation here, uh, <coughs> taken out of the uh, Jawa Chuck tree. Now, in the uh, Zhangzhung Nianzhu, I'll explain about its structure a, a little bit later, but it's not set up for practice. And so in the 13th century, uh, uh, Duchen Jawa Yungdrung uh, wrote, wrote a book called the Jawa Chuck Tree, the practice uh, uh, manual of uh, Jawa Yungdrung, which I've uh, translated here. And uh, preceding uh, that, there is uh, also the Nundro text, which you then find in the, uh, the first book uh, I did. So since that time, both the Nundro and the uh, Ngoji, or the principal practice uh, text, have been uh, uh, available. And... Uh, also, there are uh, four texts which are kind of uh, 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 backup uh, uh, back texts, the uh, Da Tri and Gom Tri, Tri Tri, and so on. Uh, they're also uh, tra translated uh, in here. Now, I was also then able myself to uh, uh, practice because I was not just uh, an a academic uh, scholar. This wasn't my uh, mo motivation. It was also the reason I left uh, Columbia U University and came out here uh, to study uh, first Sanskrit and then Tibetan because my idea was to go to India to meet the Tibetan lamas who were the living custodians of this ancient uh, wisdom uh, tradition. And so I was able to do that uh, beginning in 1969. So I included practice texts in here, uh, not only the Lami Naljur, Guru Yoga, but also the Ngundro, and finally the practice for uh, Nipangse and uh, Menmo. These are two uh, sungma, or guardians, uh, associated with the uh, practice of the Zhangjun uh, Yenju. And uh, earlier, as I said, 
I uh, had been uh, received the empowerment from Young Zen Rinpoche for uh, uh, Zhang Zhang Mary, who is the Yida meditation deity uh, associated with the uh, Zhang Zhang Yenju. But the practice of Mary is uh, Tantra, it's not uh, Dzogchen. And when you enter into uh, Tantric practice, then you have a, a, a Wang or empowerment. And so then you are uh, able to uh, uh, do uh, the uh, practices. So I had thought that doing these pu publications and also an occasional uh, lecture, I would counteract some of the uh, negative uh, propaganda uh, about the Bampos. First of all, uh, being uh, uh, shamans. And uh, secondly, being uh, black um, magicians, uh, such as uh, Naro uh, Bunchong, uh, defeated by Milarepa, who then took uh, possession of the holy mountain of uh, Gangchen Tise, or uh, Kailas, and so on. These stories were being circulated at that time, but it's just pro propaganda. And also uh, the accusation I heard in Ma Massachusetts that uh, Bon represents Buddhist uh, Satanism. And how do we know that? Because they go around the stupa uh, counterclockwise, the wrong way, and they use the uh, swastika, which is, of course, associated with uh, Hitler and the Nazis. So uh, this was all ridiculous, but... In those days, uh, people uh, did, didn't know a anything. Well, then, uh, Young Zin Rinpoche was the first uh, Bonpo Lama to come to the U United States to set things straight. And then later, uh, Geshe Ten Tenzing Wangjiao uh, came, and uh, he created his Li Ligmicha in Institute and so on. And since then, he's been rather successful in, in the U.S. and then uh, gradually other uh, uh, Bonpo Lamas have uh, come here and so now uh, uh, Bon has uh, become something uh, actual here in the West both in uh, Europe and in uh, uh, the U.S. Now what I'm going to be talking about here is Jung Jung uh, Bon. I've already explained about this uh, term here, but uh, if the uh, Bonpos have uh, monks, uh, monasteries, and Madhyamaka philosophy, uh, how do they uh, differ from uh, the other uh, Tibetan schools? Well, it is uh, largely a matter of uh, lineage. There are uh, nowadays uh, four uh, Tibetan schools, the Nyingmapa, the Sakyapa, the Kajupa, and the Kalugpa. Uh, the Nyingmapa continues from uh, the 8th century with uh, Shanti Rakshita introducing the sutra system into Tibet and Padmasambhava introducing the the Tantra system into Tibet and also uh, Dzogchen. But then uh, the ninth century with the King La Lang Dharma, uh, uh, <coughs> there was a per persecution of uh, Buddhism, uh, which largely meant that uh, monasteries like Samye and individual temples were closed down and padlocked. Uh, the Buddhist monks were forced to uh, go out, take off uh, their robes, uh, find uh, jobs and girlfriends, and so on. So then there ensued what is called uh, an almost 100-year dark age, simply because there's very few uh, texts or documents coming from that period of time. That was the 10th century. Then in the 11th century, there was a uh, revival. And the, this uh, began in Western uh, Tibet when the great master, Indian master Atisha was invited there. And then his uh, disciple in central Tibet, Gromdern Rinpoche, 
uh, uh, built the uh, first uh, monastery in that tradition, which became known as uh, Kadampa. And they took the, uh, emphasized the Vinaya, the uh, monastic rule very, very much, and so on. Whereas uh, the Lamas who were following the tradition of uh, Padmasambhava, known as uh, Ngakpas, or uh, those who have Ngak uh, mantras, tended to be married Lamas and uh, so on. And that uh, tradition of the Ngakpa was uh, condemned by the uh, Kadampas, saying this is not the proper way to do Buddhism. But we don't have to get into that. Uh, but then in the 11th century, other uh, contacts were made by India, uh, with India, various young Tibetans, which had begun in Western Tibet with uh, Rinchen Tsangpo, but then uh, continued uh, with, uh, say, for example, Marpa, you're probably quite familiar with. He went to India, uh, first Nepal, and then India as a young student, learned Tibetan uh, or Sanskrit and started doing translations and came back to uh, uh, Tibet and started teaching. Uh, other family, like the Kern family, founded Sakya Mo Mo Monastery, which was Nyingmapa in its foundation, but then they got uh, co connected with the lineage coming from the Varupa and switched over to the new Sarmapa way of doing things and also the new translations of uh, Buddhist tantras. And so uh, you have then the Sakyapa and Kajapa schools also beginning in the 11th century. Two centuries later, uh, the great uh, scholar and reformer Tsongkhapa uh, <coughs> made a synthesis of uh, Kadampa, Sakyapa, and Kajapa uh, teachings, and this was the source of the uh, Gelugpa uh, school in Tibet. And then uh, later uh, again, due to a lot of politics in the time of the fifth Dalai Lama and whatnot, which we didn't get into, uh, with the intervention of Mongol armies and the defeat of the native uh, Tibetan forces of the King of Tsang, uh, Gushri Khan established uh, the fifth Dalai Lama as a kind of spiritual ruler of Tibet. And that system uh, continued until the uh, Chinese occupation, which culminated in 1959 with the fleeing of his uh, holiness the Dalai Lama to uh, India. All right, you have these uh, Tibetan schools, and they all look uh, back to the historical Buddha, uh, Shakyamuni, who lived approximately five, 500 years uh, before Christ. But uh, the Bonpo Lamas uh, look back to an uh, earlier uh, uh, figure uh, known as uh, Tenpa Shenro. Now, Tenpa is a title. It means a teacher who establishes a spiritual tra tradition. And uh, Shen is a mysterious word, but uh, the Yongzhen Rinpoche says, well, it means something like a practice or practitioner, if you must try to translate it. Rup means supreme, also called Miwoche, which means uh, human. Uh, anyway, this was uh, his uh, title. And uh, he uh, lived a uh, long time uh, before uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. Traditionally now, uh, it's said to be 18,000 years ago, at least this figure is uh, found in the Tensei coming from the 18th century, but I don't know what was the actual source for uh, that. And uh, there are three uh, hagiographies or biographies of uh, Tenpa Shenra, one of them quite old, the Do Du, which comes from uh, the 10th uh, century, uh, and then the Zer Mik, which uh, appears to come from the 11th century. Some chapters of the Zer Mik were translated into English by Franca some time ago, but 
you, they are in some obscure learned academic journal, which you can find in the Berkeley Library, but probably nowhere else. And then in the 14th century, there's the, the ZG, which is the largest and most uh, extensive uh, uh, account of the career of uh, Turnke Shenrup. And that uh, was a oral transmission from uh, Loden Yingpo, who was a Tertun and a Lama uh, living in the uh, 14th century. But a very old material is uh, found in this. That he put all this together and said he was instructed in this uh, by uh, an ancient master who appeared in, in visions uh, to him. And it's from this text that the extracts found in the Nine Ways of Bonn are, uh, uh, are the source for, for this. Anyway, the career of Tentra Shenrup is summarized by the, uh, his 12 uh, great uh, deeds. And uh, uh, a, there was a book, uh, Darm, Darmsala, uh, published uh, uh, containing this, which you may have seen. But anyway, uh, the first of uh, these deeds was his uh, rebirth in a human body where he was uh, reborn in the royal clan of uh, Mushen in the palace of uh, Barpo Soje. And when he was born, he uh, had the 32 marks and 80 minor uh, characteristics of a, a Nirmanakaya Buddha. And this uh, occurred in the uh, land of Omalungring, which is uh, said to be located in uh, Tazik, or uh, Central Asia. Now, Omalungring is uh, constructed in a mandala pattern, so in the center of this, there is the sacred seven-story, uh, or nine-story uh, swastika mountain, Yongjong uh, Gutsek, which is a kind of uh, axis uh, of uh, the world with various palaces and cities around it and so on and then the whole country uh, surrounded by rings of mountains and this uh, is said to be in Tazik or Central Asia but uh, if you go to uh, Aeroflot and try to get a ticket to Omolone uh, they don't know where it is so. now Ta Tazik uh, survives today uh, as uh, in the name Tajikistan, and uh, Tajik is a uh, person from Central Asia who speaks uh, an Iranian type uh, uh, language. Abdullah Abdullah, who's running for president of Afghanistan, he's a Tajik, for for example. So, in ancient times, it was probably uh, uh, so, uh, somewhere out there, but. Oma Lungring is a bayul. It exists at a higher spiritual uh, vibration and dimension. So it isn't some place uh, we can get to as a tourist. <laughs> Maybe if you're good boys and girls and do your practice, after you die, you can be reborn there. But you don't get there uh, by taking a, a tour. So... <laughs> Now, uh, Trenpa Shenrov was an enlightened Buddha, and so he began teaching at a very early age, and uh, at the age of 12, he taught the four causal ways of uh, Bon, which are the uh, first of the uh, four ways of uh, Bon, and then uh, the uh, nine ways and the four uh, portals of, or doorways of uh, Bon. And then his uh, third uh, uh, great deed was the subduing of uh, various beings by emanating out of himself the uh, Dushen Druk, uh, the six uh, uh, Dushen. Uh, these are manifestations of the Buddha that appear in the six lokas or six uh, destinies of uh, re rebirth which are the deva worlds, the asura worlds, the human world, the animal realms, uh, the preto worlds, and the uh, hell realms. 
and they are represented as uh, uh, six uh, distinct Buddha figures. They also appear in the Books of the Dead and uh, so on. So you may be familiar with them. Uh, the fourth great deed is the guiding of beings. Uh, so he subdued various uh, great kings who were dominated by their negative emotions and led them into the practice of uh, ethics and morality and virtue and so on. <clears throat> now, as an enlightened Buddha, he demonstrated how we can realize enlightenment as a human being. If he simply appeared down here as a, a god, completely perfect and very powerful and so on, we humans would despair that we could ever uh, attain that level. So he showed himself, out, and this is because of his uh, great compassion for all sentient beings, he showed himself as a human being doing all the kinds of things uh, we do, except uh, he was a prince, so he was rich. He didn't have to go out and find a job and, and so on. But he did get married. So he married the princess uh, Horzal uh, Jalmetma, and uh, uh, she is regarded as a uh, reincarnation or as a manifestation of uh, uh, enlightened wisdom, that is, of uh, uh, Chama. Uh, in the Bumpo system, Chama represents the Prajnaparamita, the uh, perfection of uh, wisdom. Now, uh, he got married. Well, the next thing you do, number six, he emanated progeny, uh, that is, he had uh, children. So eight sons and two uh, daughters to whom he uh, taught the Dharma. And then uh, seven, uh, he conquered the Mara demons because the Mara demons, <coughs> or dude, are always making problems uh, here on earth for human beings and so on. And in particular, uh, there was a, a demon prince and black magician known as uh, Kapalakring, who came from uh, a dimension, a dark dimension somewhere up there in the uh, nor northwest. But he appeared as a very uh, handsome young man, a bit gothic, you know, with a black leather jacket and, and all this. And in those days, the uh, daughters, the two daughters of Trungpa Shenra, they were young and energetic, and they liked to go out and dance and, and so on. So, in Old Malungring, they went to the equivalent of uh, the disco in, in those days, and they met this young guy. And he succeeded in seducing the youngest uh, daughter of uh, Trinpa Shenra and then taking her off to this uh, uh, dark uh, dimension. Well, Trinpa Shenra, and this being Father's Day, you can uh, understand this, uh, he wasn't going to let his uh, daughter be involved with this uh, <coughs> evil prince. And so he rescued her and brought her back uh, to Oma Lungring. But this really made uh, uh, Kepa Lungring, uh angry, and he decided he was going to do something uh, to injure Trungpa Shenro. Well, uh, what he did was uh, steal his horses. He had se uh, seven horses in the stable, and he took these uh, horses and put them in hiding in Kongpo in uh, southwestern uh, uh, Tibet. Well, uh, this was the occasion then of uh, Tantra Shenra to visit Tibet, because normally he was uh, living there in Oma Lungring and all his activities were uh, occurring there, not in Tibet. But he went through the Dalam, the arrow uh, passageway. Uh, I don't know if that's like uh, the BART or something, you know, <laughs> or Metro, right? But he passed through that and came to uh, North. Uh, Western Tibet, traveled across Tibet and went to uh, uh, Kongpo. And there he encountered uh, Chakpalak Ring and they got into this uh, magical battle, a little bit like uh, Star Wars, you know, with uh, lasers flashing in every direction and so on. And they, uh, they threw mountains at each other and so on. It really was a disaster for the landscape. 
uh, but he, Tent uh, Prashenra, finally took one mountain and he put it down, boom, uh, beside the Tsangpo River. And this settled e e everything down. And this became Kongpo Bonri, which is the holy, uh, principal holy uh, re religious uh, pilgrimage site for the Bumpos uh, in Tibet. And some Westerners have uh, visited there now and uh, so on. So there's even a little uh, anthropological uh, literature about uh, Kongpo Bonri. Well, their battles uh, c continued until finally Trinpa Shenrup uh, d defeated this uh, demon prince and he was forced to become Trinpa Shenrup's uh, d disciple. But he was still a bit deceitful because later he tried to get Trinpa Shenrup's uh, books and uh, burn them and uh, so on. So he created a lot of trouble. So this is a very I interesting story there. Uh, then his eighth great deed is the vanquishing of the Simbos or the Rakshasa uh, demons. Uh, dude is the usual word for a demon, that's Mara. But then there's another kind of, uh, the dude tend to be more uh, elegant, you know, like Count Dracula and so on. But the Rakshasas, they tend to be big and rough and hairy and like to eat people. Uh -huh. uh, and so... There was a king named uh, Kongse uh, Trujijalpo, and uh, he decided he wanted to build a temple on this uh, island in, in the sea. And uh, he had uh, ma magical powers, and so he was getting help from the Simpo spirits, but then uh, they rebelled, and he needed the help of uh, Tenpa Shenrup, who came and subdued them. So this uh, temple could be uh, completed, and he transmitted the uh, go Goji, the four portals or doorways of Bon, uh, to this uh, King uh, Kongse. And then uh, his ninth great deed is uh, re that of uh, re renunciation. Now he was going to show uh, the path of uh, re renunciation which uh, is involved with the monastic system and so on. So he uh, demonstrated the method of renouncing uh, from the world and became a, a monk and followed the uh, ascetic path. This was after he completed all his uh, activities and duties as a husband and a father and so on. So he did everything. Uh, then the tenth great deed was a retirement from the world. He went into the uh, forest on the nine-story swastika mountain and uh, lived there in isolation and practiced uh, me meditation. And this was all in aid of his eleventh uh, uh, great uh, deed, that is uh, li liberation. So he taught the gradual path to uh, attain liberation by way of the ten paramitas or perfections, that is, uh, the sutra system. <coughs> and then uh, his final deed was that of uh, ultimate uh, re realization of uh, enlightenment. Uh, if he had just come down here and then just uh, stayed without uh, uh, passing away or dying and so on, again, uh, humanity would think it would be po impossible to attain uh, enlightenment and uh, li liberation. You would have to be an immortal god. So he, uh, out of his compassion, he demonstrated then uh, his uh, uh, the passing away of his uh, physical nirvana, uh, his physical body, and the entering into uh, nirvana. Now among his uh, disciples. There was one known as uh, Mucho Demdruk, and he was also like his uh, se secretary and so on, and wrote down a, a lot of teachings. So he was basically the first to put down the teachings of uh, Trenpa Shenrup in writing, and then under him worked uh, six uh, scholars who were great uh, translators. 
And the first of these uh, translate the teachings into the language of Kazakh, or uh, Central Asia. The second into the language of uh, Zhangzhung, which is uh, the ancient name for North uh, Western Tibet. Uh, the third into the language of Sumpa, which more or less nowadays is uh, Amdo in Tibet. Uh, the next into the language of India, which means Sanskrit. Uh, the fifth into the language of China. And the sixth into the language of Trom, which uh, more or less means the West. Maybe Trom means Rome or Byzantium or something, but anyway, that is uh, the uh, West. Now, the teachings came of Trenpa Shenwa came from uh, Tazik, uh, meaning Central Asia, where we have republics now like Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and Kazakhstan, etc. And they came down into Zhangzhong, which is the ancient name for Western and uh, Northern uh, Tibet, uh, centering around the great uh, uh, mountain Ganchantise or Kailas, uh, we, we call it here in the West. And uh, in ancient times, this was an independent uh, kingdom uh, with its own culture. Uh, and the religious uh, culture was uh, that of uh, Ban. And uh, they had their own language, which is related to Central Tibetan, but is also a different. It is a, it is a tibeto burman language. There are many samples of it that have survived, and uh, even a lengthy text in, in this uh, language for uh, the Sipa Dzerpuk. And the Japanese, uh, Japanese scholars have been very active in, in studying this language, and in more recent times, uh, the Chinese have d discovered some manuscripts and also inscriptions in the uh, Zhangzhong language. Years ago, Western scholars would say the Zhangzhong language never existed. It was just made up by Bampo Lamas to have something like the Buddhist Sanskrit. Now we know that this is not, not true at all. It is a, a language. Many words from Zhangzhong are found in Tibetan and particularly in the language of uh, Ladakh and uh, part of it survives in uh, Kunuri, uh, the Kunuri dialect uh, spoken in the north part of that valley in the uh, uh, Himalayas. Uh, and also uh, in Zhangzhong, there existed a system of writing which is older than Tibetan. It's known as Maryek, uh, which is uh, ancestral to, in part ancestral to the uh, Ume script. Uh, if you've ever studied Tibetan, you know there's two principal forms of script. Uchen is the printed uh, script, which you find in most books and things, but there's also a more cursive uh, script known as Ume, with, uh, without a head. And uh, that seems to be uh, connected with this ancient uh, Maryak uh, uh, script. Now, Alma Lungring definitely existed as a historical place. There is a debate about how big it was but uh, there are many uh, ruins there around Mount Kailas to the west of the mountain. There's uh, Chonglong, which means the Garuda Valley. And this is along the uh, Sutledge uh, River, which flows to the west. And uh, if you go there, or if you've been to uh, New Mexico, it looks a lot like uh, New Mexico. There's these cliff uh, cities there. You have the river, and then you have terraces, and then above that you have a cliff filled with uh, uh, caves. And uh, Chonglong, on top of the cliffs, there's the ruins of Mulkar, uh, the silver castle. This is where the uh, kings of uh, uh, Zhangzhong lived. 
in the time of Teoten Pashenra. This is the Jaruchen uh, dynasty. In the uh, Karchak for Mount Kailas, it mentions 18 uh, Jaru king, uh, Jaruchen kings. Uh, Jaruchen means uh, uh, having horns. They wore a headdress that had horns uh, coming up like a sort of turban with horns coming out of it. And uh, the first of these 18 kings is said to have been contemporary with uh, Tenpa Shenra, so that the teachings of uh, Tenpa Shenra would have come quite early into uh, Zhang Zheng. And then later, uh, there were the Ligmicha kings. According to Yongsing Rinpoche, Ligmicha is not just the name of one king, it's like a dynastic name. Literally, in the Zhangsheng language, it means the king of men. And uh, from the uh, sources from the uh, Dunhuang Library, uh, this is a site in China just to the uh, northeast uh, of uh, Tibet. And at one time, it was conquered by the Tibetans and held by them for a century or so. And uh, there was a very large library co uh, collection. And then when the Muslims were uh, coming, uh, the library was sealed inside some caves. And then only discovered at the end of the uh, 19th century with uh, Oral Stein uh, going there the uh, first time. Uh, he was Hungarian, but working for the British. And then a little later, uh, Paleo from uh, Paris. And so bulk of these Zhang Zheng manuscripts are, are, have now been preserved in uh, London and, and Paris. And these are the oldest uh, historical records from uh, Tibet with chronicles and annals from the time of the Tibetan uh, Empire and uh, so on. And even some very old uh, uh, Bompo texts uh, uh, found there and so on. And there, uh, there is a record of Zhang Zhong being conquered, not in the 8th century, but before in the 7th century, by the first Buddhist king of Tibet, uh, Tsongsen Gompo. But then uh, we have other records in the Bompo tradition that the conquest of Zhang Zhong was not completed until a century later, in the time of the great Buddhist king, uh, Tisong De Deitsen. Uh, Yongzen Rinpoche explains this, that it's a dynastic title. So there were more than one Li Ligmichuk king, not, not just. So it appears that under uh, Tantan Gampo, uh, Zhang Zheng became a vassal state under central Tibet, but still uh, remained an independent entity with its uh, own king but under the Tibetan king. But in the 8th uh, uh, century, when the Tibetan Empire was vastly expanding into uh, Central Asia, the uh, Tibetans uh, ambushed uh, King Lebensha, and he was uh, uh, assassinated. And so we find this story also in the uh, Zhangzheng Nenju, that one of the queens of Limicha uh, was very distressed by this. And she went to this uh, great master, uh, Jerpong uh, Nangshu Lepo, who was not only a Dzogchen practitioner, but a, a tantrika and an expert in the practice of uh, Zhang Zhong Mary. And one uh, aspect of uh, activity practice with uh, Zhang Zheng Mary is uh, Tso, or uh, magical missiles. Uh, of course, now, nowadays we're very familiar with uh, missiles. You only have to look at television. You see this happening all the time, like in Iraq. Well, in those days, a little more unusual. Now, he was living on this uh, island in the Darok uh, Lake. And um, in fact, uh, this island right here uh, 
my friend John Beleza, who's an ar archaeologist, he has been making a systematic survey of the remains of uh, Zhang Zhong. So this is one of his photographs that he let me use. And uh, this is from the Darok Lake in northern Tibet. To the west of Mount Kailas, there's the lake uh, di district. And there are many lakes there. The biggest one is the Dangra uh, Lake, where Yongzhen Rinpoche uh, did a retreat before he fled Tibet. But to the east of that, there's the Darok Lake. And uh, after uh, Jarpungpa retired from uh, uh, working for the king of Tibet. He was kind of his uh, purohit, or uh, priest. And he retired from that and was doing a retreat and was sponsored by a local nomad uh, chief. And later he moved from uh, the Deerface Cave onto this uh, uh, island. So the queen sought him out there and begged him to do something about the Tibetan king who had the, uh, her husband assassinated and the uh, Tibetan army was occupying Zhang Zhong now and pressing them into uh, service as uh, coolies for the uh, Tibetan army as they were marching west. And uh, so he agreed to uh, do that. And uh, he said, well, uh, you, you'll find this text uh, called the Van Manupa uh, in here with, with this story I'm telling you right now. And uh, <clears throat> he said, well, uh, do you want me to blow up the whole country, like nuking them? Uh, for that, I need a lot of gold dust, because you have to have gold dust to, to make a, a so magical missile. Or you want me just to blow up his palace, or you want me to blow him up? And she said, well, I don't want to kill all these Tibetans. That would be a terrible thing. I don't want you to blow up the country. Just hit him. He said, okay. And she gave him the gold dust he needed for that. He did the practices. And of course, uh, Tisong Datsun felt very ill. And he called in one of his lamas and uh, who did divination to find out what was wrong, why he was so sick. And they said, well, uh, there's this uh, master in the north who has sent uh, this illness to him to you, you must uh, propitiate him. So he sent a delegation of ministers up to the Darok Lake. And they're looking around and they ask the local nomads uh, where they might find this Jerpon Nangshalerpo. And they said, oh, he's living on the, the, this island. So they go over there and they find his tent. And I look in the tent and there's only an antelope horn. So I think, what has happened to him? And they're all having a discussion there. And they asked one of the nomads, they said, well, uh, he's a great magician. He's a shape changer. He can do, appear in any form. So they thought, oh, maybe this antelope horn is him. So they bring the gold dust and the apologies of the king and so on all to the antelope horn, which then transforms into Jepong uh, Nangshalepo. And uh, they offer the king's apologies and so on. And he said, all right, I will uh, withdraw my magical attack under uh, certain c conditions. He's responsible for having Ligmicha, the last king of Shangchung, assassinated. So he must uh, then build a, a gold stupa on the slopes of uh, Mount Kailas uh, to contain the, the, the relics of uh, the king. Uh, secondly, he, uh, my own uh, clan, uh, he will uh, take them into the government and p permit them to sit on the uh, left side of, of the king in the throne room and uh, so on and consult them on various go government uh, policies. And thirdly, you will not persecute uh, my uh, Bumpo teachings, that is the uh, Dzogchen teachings of the Zhongchun Nyenju and the uh, practices for uh, the meditation deity uh, Zhongchun Mary. And the king agreed uh, to that. So uh, this is the reason that the Zhongchun Nyenju never became a terama or a hidden treasure uh, 
text. The uh, two sources of Bonpampa scriptures are uh, uh, Kama and Terma. Uh, Kama, or sometimes they call it Nyenju, oral tra transmission. These are continuous transmissions from ancient times until the present. Uh, so this is a continuous, uninterrupted lineage. Whereas Terma is an interrupted uh, lineage. There were two principal persecutions in the uh, history of Bon. Uh, one occurred in the time of uh, Drikon Tsempo, the eighth king of uh, central uh, Tibet. He became, uh, Bonpo teachings were brought into uh, central Tibet in the time of uh, Mutri Tsempo, the second king. And uh, so Bonpo Lamas became very I influential in the country. Uh, Drikun Tsempo was a bit paranoid. He thought they might be trying to take over. And uh, so he expelled them uh, from the country. It said at that time, certain texts had to be, uh, like the uh, Chipung and so on, uh, had to be concealed as a uh, terma text. Uh, later, uh, there was a, a nobleman who tricked the uh, king into having a dual uh, combat. And while they're fighting with their swords, he managed to throw uh, some dead uh, uh, animals on the shoulder of his king. Uh, the king, so his uh, protective spirits then deserted him, and he was able to then cut his uh, mutak, that uh, rainbow ray of light that connected from the top of the king's head up into heaven. Because in the early days, uh, the kings of uh, Tibet did not die like we do, uh, leaving a, a body here behind, but would dissolve into the rainbow and uh, uh, re return to uh, uh, heaven. Well, having cut the mutak of uh, Tridikam Tsempo, then his corpse uh, just fell on the ground. Uh, then the son of uh, the uh, king uh, led a rebellion against the uh, assassin. But then they had the problem, uh, what do you do now that you have the corpse of a king? So he had to invite uh, Bompos, uh, Bompo Lamas from uh, uh, Kashmir, Zhangzhong, and Drusha, uh, which is now in Pakistan, uh, to come and instigate uh, funeral uh, rites because previous to that, the Tibetans didn't know how to do this. So then the first tomb w was built and funeral rites were inaugurated in uh, Tibet. So that was the first per persecution. The second persecution, as I mentioned before, occurred in the 8th cent century of our era in the time of uh, Tisong Daitsen, who uh, decided to uh, make uh, Tibet uh, Buddhist because all the other countries around uh, China and Nepal and India and Central Asia were all Buddhist at, at, at this time. So he said, okay, all you uh, Bompo Lamas, you either have to sh shave your heads and put on red robes, take off your blue ones, and uh, become Buddhist monks or leave the uh, country. So mainly uh, at that time, Drenpa Namka and Lishu Takring uh, concealed all these uh, dharmas, uh, hidden treasure texts in Tibet and Bhutan, with some assistance from uh, some of the sons of Chisong uh, De, Deitsen, and so on. And uh, many of these texts, Bompo texts, were also uh, hidden in Samye and uh, Buddhist temples and so on. Uh, and they were uh, rediscovered uh, centuries later in the 10th and 11th, 12th uh, century. We'll get into that a little while later. And um, uh, so this was the second uh, persecution of Bon. The third per persecution has occurred in our own time with uh, Mao Zedong and his cultural re revolution where uh, many monasteries, both Buddhist and Bompo, were uh, blown up and destroyed by the Red Guards. Many books were lost, but also many were hidden away. 
and uh, Menry Monastery itself was uh, d destroyed by the uh, Red Guards, although, although now it's in the process of being rebuilt. And uh, uh, fortunately, many books uh, survived, but uh, uh, when the Bumpa Lamas first left uh, Tibet in 1959 and 1960, uh, they didn't have many books with them. In fact, uh, uh, Yongzen Rinpoche, when he fled Tibet, he only had two books with him, uh, a block print of the Zhangzheng Yenju, the oral tradition of Zhangzheng, and a manuscript of the Maju, the Mother Tantra. And that was uh, all they had. So in the 1970s, there was quite an effort uh, made to bring uh, Bumpo texts to New Delhi to reprint them. Fortunately, a library survived in Nepal, in Sa Samling Monastery in Dolpo, and so those texts were brought down to uh, 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 New Delhi, and litho edition, lithograph editions and so on were made of them. But uh, uh, more recent times, uh, things eased up in, in China, and now uh, many uh, Bumpo texts are being uh, re reprinted, uh, including the uh, Conjure, the vast uh, collection of the teachings of Tenpa Shenra, and the Katan, the uh, commentaries uh, on these teachings. So, uh, let's take a break then, and we can all have some tea. And then we'll resume a bit more and talk about some more of the Zhang Zhang Ninja.